Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey, After Buzzers, and welcome to the first ever after show for CBS's Battle Creek. We'll be talking tonight about episode, season one, episode one, The Battle Creek Way. But before we do, everybody out there listening in, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash afterbuzztv. Download the podcast on iTunes, listen along on SoundCloud, you name it. Please rank, subscribe, comment, you name it. We want to hear what you guys think of the show <laughs> during the week, and we want to talk to you. I'm your host, Lauren Salon. You can find me on Twitter at Lauren Salon. That's S-A-L-A-U-N. And to my left over here, we've got my lovely co-host, Gary Thomas. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Gary Thomas. All right. So let's get into it. What did you think of tonight's first episode? Um, it was so interesting. I was definitely a little nervous of whether it was going to be funny or not, but I was so happy that it actually was funny. Yeah, it was, it's a refreshing take on the police yes. crime procedural. I think it's a little different than kind of the normal cop shows that we're used to seeing, you know, like SVU or Criminal right. Minds or something. It's got a lot of humor to it, which was really fun to watch, right. I think. And as I'm sure everybody out there knows, this show was an idea of Vince Gilligan's who created Breaking Bad from like 10 years ago. Exactly, that was script. so interesting. Yeah, and so, you know, Breaking Bad becomes a hit and we've got Better Call Saul and he's like, oh, by the way, I've got this script too. Someone want to make it? <laughs> and everyone's like, yes, us. So we've got this, you know, script got dusted off and created and it's also, you know, created in part by um, David Shore, who was a producer and writer for House. So, you know, we've got a really solid team behind the series. So that was think, one of the... I think that's why it's going to... I think this first episode had to do well, just because right, right. of the people behind it. And I like that it was It was kind of like House. It had that same dryness, but like, still funny and yeah, still... Yeah, it kept some, you on your... some off-color humor yes. sometimes. It was good, but then still serious moments yes. and that kind of serious content kind of running throughout but definitely those really fun moments i i loved it i thought it was really good and i love crime shows i <laughs> binge watch crime shows all the time so it was fun to have another one to add to the books especially one with this much like kind of satire quirky. and quirky humor yeah. to it too so why don't we run through kind of our cast and characters kind of a who's who we've got Josh Dumel comes in as special agent. He's FBI agent Milt Chamberlain. And you heard that right, Milt Chamberlain, <laughs> not Wilt Chamberlain, like the basketball player, which I thought was, I think the name itself is so funny because that's got to come up, like why he his name is like that. I mean, it's such like a kind of, ah, a name with like a lot of like... I think that was it. Pizzazz it has, yeah, around it, I yeah, guess it has some you character would say. Behind yeah, it. that... And he's such a, like, character, this guy, you know, yes. Mr. Perfect. And... Well, you have to think about it. Will Chamberlain had that same persona behind him. Right. The womanizer, the very good looking, that everybody wanted uh, Will Chamberlain. And then this is being, you know, being wrote 10 years ago. Yeah. It's kind of relevant that he kind of you were played but, off of that because today someone wouldn't use that name. But still even 10 years ago, I mean, they can update <laughs> the script, you know, before they put it he on He was in TV. that mindset. But, right, but... I think Wilt Chamberlain, I mean, he played like in the 60s, so, I know, which but makes I, it I even would, better, I think. Exactly. So it's like you're, you're rekindling. <laughs> I would not think anyone would use this today at all. No. I think they would find a different, you know, play on words today. But 10 years ago, I can kind of give it to him. You know, I'll, I'll let it slide. Yeah, I know. When I was reading about it before the show aired, I was like, wait. His name's Milt Chamberlain? Isn't someone's <laughs> name already that? <laughs> like, that sounds a little weird. But anyway, we've got special agent Milt Chamberlain, who's this very good-looking, well-dressed, fancy-pants FBI agent who gets relocated, essentially. He's opening a field office in Battle Creek, Michigan, which is a real place. It really exists. <laughs> um, although they filmed in L.A., 
I believe. But anyway, Milt is getting, is moving. And that's kind of how the episode starts with his like going away right. party. That's one of the initial moments. Um, but before we jump into that, we'll keep going through characters. So then we've got Detective Russ Agnew, played by Dean Winters, who we've seen on 30 Rock. He was in SVU as well. Mm -hmm. And he's such a, he's the local cop. And yes. He has a reputation for being a good cop, but he's also so cynical and kind of jaded, too. And he's, you know, initially, I wonder if you'd like his character, but they do such a good job, I think, of having some of those kind of, you know, rough around the edges moments paired with some really charming times from him, like un unintentionally charming, exactly. you know, and I was you really say, like him. Yeah, no, he's not trying it. in any way. It's very unintentional, but I think charming. And I liked both the characters. I mean, what do you think of the two main guys? I think that it's strategic writing, you know. Of there, course. There's the unconventional one and there's the well put together one. So they you're obviously gonna have them together. Um I didn't I didn't not like his character, but mm -hmm. it was nothing that yet has made me love his character. Who? who? Um Russ. Okay. I didn't, I thought he was okay. Like I didn't I, I, I just, I'm like, glad he's there. I like Dean Winters in like everything he does. <laughs> so I I am already going in bias to like his character, I think, but he didn't do too much to kind of, you know, his character's off-putting and like such a grump anyway. Yeah. But I think you end up like I mean, in the beginning when he's he's got voiceover of him like going into the office and he's basically writing a letter to <laughs> that Les was so Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes to be like, I think 60 Minutes should come on down here to Battle Creek and do a story because we've got really old equipment, things need to be upgraded, but we're still fighting crime, you know? Right. So it's like, that's like that cute, hopeful side of his, which is so silly when you compare it to his really cynical side. But I do, I, I like the kind of rivalry and you know later on throughout the show they're going to end up being buddies and like poke fun at each other of course still but right now it's very much the rivalry the rivalry thing. is so one-sided though oh yeah milk yeah. does not see what's going on he's just like i'm just still operating i'm hearing you out but this is what's worked in the past russ is all about i need to prove to you that right. you are wrong that you're naive that i'm better well i think that there's more to milk though because he you know, I think him moving to Battle Creek is a little bit of a step down for him. He probably sees it as that in his career. And so he's like in the beginning when he's like, smile, laugh, you love it here. He's like pepping himself yeah. up to make sure that he's putting on a good face. So it seems like he, you know, really cares what everybody thinks. But I think there's going to be a little a little more to his character oh, I definitely, than just that like polished Mr. Perfect. They did some foreshadowing like crazy yeah. in this episode. Just. There's something in his past that is just right. Is that moment, to come out. the moment at the when they're about to break down the door. Now I'm jumping ahead to like stuff that right. happened later. But <laughs> that moment when he, uh, when Russ is like, "Oh, I bet you had a your dad never lost his job and your dogs never died and goldfish your goldfish never, never died." died. <laughs> yeah, and you kind of see a look on Milt's face that he's you know that kind of suggests that mm -hmm. maybe some stuff has gone on in his life and it's not totally perfect. So maybe we'll. It's just, see about that there later. were other moments too, but that was like the main one that just really sticks out because just the way he looked and just the way he was yeah, acting. Yeah, like, that was the big one. Yeah. You can't be that perfect. No, yeah, no one's that like, perfect. Yeah, you can't no. be this naive and become a cop. He's like, I know you can't. To be and you're like, wait, oh, there's more to that. Exactly. What were you going like, to say? Oh, what oh, else wait. is that story? <laughs> Tell us. Tell us what's more to that. Um, anyway, some of the other characters, we've got Cal Penn, who's a really funny guy, so it's fun to see him in this as Detective Fontenelle. Um, Aubrey Dollar playing Holly, who's kind of their like office secretary admin person who has a huge crush I on know. Russ. I yeah. know. She plays it very well. I, I'm waiting to see if it is reciprocated. I know. That, I feel, yeah. Cause we don't can know she what, get that out of him? Seriously. <laughs> of all people, she get that out of Russ. I don't know. Yeah, but she definitely has a big crush on him. You know, defending his eclairs as being just as good as Mills. <laughs> she goes to visit him when he's in the hospital you know, hides the, the newspaper at the end, all that stuff. Um, then we've got Detective Aaron. We've got two Aarons. We've got Detective Aaron Funkhauser and I believe another a female Aaron. Yeah, E. Yeah, she goes by goes E. Goes by e. <laughs> Didn't tell them apart, you know, this tiny girl and this <laughs> giant guy. Um, and then we've got Detective Niblet, and they ask why they call him Niblet, and he's like, <laughs> my little teeth. Or like for nibbling corn. That was so creepy. I hope those are fake teeth. I don't know. What do you think? 
I don't know. It was just like. I hope they're, when they said they're nibble so it, creepy. When, when they said nibble it, and they made him smile, <laughs> it was just like. <laughs> I don't want to look at it. Can oh, we just move on? Yeah, just can we move stop on? Stop looking like, at his mouth. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Anyway, yeah. And then we've got Janet McTeer as their commander, who's kind of the boss of their station. Um, Wasn't she on something else where she has that same role? Like, she she just, I feel like she plays that same oh, kind of, know. she just has that same demeanor all the time. You yeah. know, just kind of the, I don't know what she was on <laughs> that before this. Stickler. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of the, the boss. Yeah. Hide from her. Um, Anyway, so the show is not in itself, like, you know, the crime procedural is not that original. But I think the way that they've done it with spicing in mm -hmm. all that humor and stuff is definitely a fresh take on the crime, the type of crime show, you know? I need Funkhauser. Yeah. I need him <laughs> in this great. show. He was great. Um, and... Yeah, so I thought it was, they pulled it off really well, and it ends up being less about kind of the crime that's going on, you know, with this week we had kind of the drug dealer thing mm -hmm. going on, and more about the relationship right. between the two guys. Um, and so it kind of, the way it kicks off, you know, it opens on a kid's performance, and Russ runs in and steals this video camera from some dad who's videotaping <laughs> his daughter, like, doing some performance up on stage, and then they go to their like undercover van essentially because they need equipment, which is a recurring theme in the episode. And I'm sure the whole show will be how kind of run down Battle Creek is mm -hmm. and their department. You know, they have all this old equipment. Nothing works. They need more funding. They need more help essentially. Like, you know, when they're doing that, they end up going to... Um, Cal Penn, Detective Fontenelle's sister's house to get a baby monitor to use while they're going undercover with this guy, which ends up kind of, the batteries die and gives them away, <laughs> and then they have to come in and try and stun gun the bad guy with which a stun gun that's work. broken. So that, I think, is going to be a really funny recurring thing throughout, like all this equipment that just doesn't work. Though, I bet at some point it's going to kind of bite them in the butt and someone's going to get hurt. You know what, I think that going back to that point, what was interesting about it, because we talked about this with um, with Milk Chamberlain, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but in that part, it also, it's just so much character development, so much strategic writing in it. When Russ says, don't delete the little girl's performance, it just shows a different part of his personality, the heart in yeah, him, too. Yeah, exactly. So I think they just throw it in and little sprinkles for each person, and want, they want you to capture it. Right, so you exactly. Can remember it. He's like, yeah, don't tape over that. We want to keep that. Right. We're going to give it back to the dad so he can have his daughter's right. performance. Yeah, definitely. Having little, little drops of that sort of thing make you exactly. like his character. So it's really smart to kind of sprinkle that in there so he's not just one-dimensional. Um, and, and yeah, and part of when he's telling his boss that, hey, we need more funds, we need more equipment, like, what, do you want us to just start shooting people since we can't <laughs> use our stun guns? <laughs> like, we'll do that, I guess. We got the hint. We'll shoot people now. Um, she just says, oh, well, we're getting help. Oh. And which, to me, I mean, how practical do we look at it? Because it is a TV show that's part comedy. I mean, whatever. But why is the FBI going to make a little make a field office in little old battle creek you know because that's what they're either the fbi knows something that they don't yeah, know yeah that's what or... i'm thinking this is just some random stuff going on <laughs> like yeah well, the FBI it doesn't be... tend to be, it's, it's not a random organization no so. it can't be that coincidental like oh we're gonna just make an office in battle creek population fifty thousand people <laughs> you know they there's got to be something behind that and some kind of bigger reason why Milt's coming down there and mm -hmm. kind of establishing that office down there and why are they putting all that those funds into it because we see when they're at the crime scenes that he's got all these resources that he can use like all this technology and equipment and special testing you know like all this he stuff knows everybody does everything he knows and... every yeah so there's got to be more to that that I think it'll kind of reveal itself throughout the season what I think that's so I think that's, about yeah I think there's going to be some type of climactic part about that about the crime there and yeah. this is why we're here it's like oh I've been yeah monitoring this drug ring mm -hmm. or something this big cri underground crime organization <laughs> I don't know and like yeah loops Russ into it and then Russ is like gets yeah all Russ this is just going to get all the way know. I'm going to get mad over again because he didn't know about it so. right exactly <laughs> exactly so 
when Milt comes to, you know, right before he arrives in Battle Creek, they have this going away party for him at his office. And right. we see, as we see later in the episode, that everybody loves him. Like, oh my gosh, he's everyone's favorite person. Except right at the end of that little going away party, some guy is sitting at his desk and it's like, oh, finally get out of here, you know? So. It made me wonder if that was a consensus over the office or was that just something that one person felt, you know, cause it kind of seemed, seemed egged on. Like everyone was like, yeah. oh, you're great at everything. Like, you know, you're just perfect. I feel like they just love him. Come on. Yeah. It could be. I so think, it could be just the one guy. Yeah, I think it's that one guy. So I'm wondering what's the beef? Like why, why does he hate him? What gonna, happened? I think, we, I think we'll find out. Yeah, that's gonna resurface yeah. for sure. Yeah, so another funny moment that I really loved was when the old lady keeps calling in to make like a police complaints <laughs> and Russ answers it. He's like, I don't, I forget what her name is. But he's like, Oh gosh, this lady again. And she's complaining. She's trying to make a complaint, a formal complaint about Tom Selleck on Magnum PI. Right. And, Oh, I just love that. Like, Hey, if you can throw in a Tom Selleck joke, do it. <laughs> Why miss out on the opportunity? Best mustache in the world. Anyway. Um, so the next time the phone rings, Russ thinks it's going to be, that same lady calling again and Milt of course answers it and it's a big tip off about a double homicide. So they go down and they're investigating this. It seems like two drug dealers have been killed and um, again we see this dichotomy between Russ and Milt where Russ goes in he's like surveying the scene. He's like all right this is what happened and that guy was shot there and then he fell over there blah blah blah. And Milt's like, well, I don't really like to assume I know what happened. I'm going to, we're going to do our testing and run an analysis and all that. And so I thought that was funny because, again, you know, we keep seeing Russ wanting to prove himself and show but that. in hindsight, if you think about it, there were parts, you know, once the crime was solved, that part of the things that he said were true. Oh, yeah. It, it definitely yeah, he was knew. true. He yeah. knew stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and I thought I liked how they paired in those moments the music, the soundtrack with what was going on. <laughs> like while Russ is saying his theories, he's like, oh my gosh, and then this happened, and then this, this. It's like the music starts getting more intense and stuff, and then Milt will interrupt, and it's like, Meow. and they, it just, kept, they did that a few times. It was so funny. The chemistry they have together is just so funny it's so good it's so good like i i think that they, this is the perfect match right this is the perfect mm -hmm. match and the perfect two characters to, to contrast each other it's just too good it's great yeah i i love the two of them together i mean i think they're both very solid actors so it's fun yeah. to see them um in this role i think we've obviously seen dean winters do a lot of comedy stuff and a lot of serious stuff too and josh has been doing a lot more movies you know transformers yeah. and things like that so it's cool to kind of have them together in this i think it's a fun almost unexpected pairing but totally works and it's it super does. fun to watch like such does. an odd couple but it's it's perfect um yeah so we keep going we we're on this case with the two dead drug dealers and um they meet with Ricky and they kind of who's the witness to it and they kind of <laughs> convince him to lie and I totally thought that was as that was happening I was like okay what is going on he's totally gonna get busted for this he's telling this witness to lie and identify the guy and he's like oh yeah he'll get they'll they'll do a plea deal and he'll go to jail he's a bad guy anyway so it's okay but it'll be fine we'll get it you know mm -hmm. hands clean wrap it up and I was surprised that Milt kind of went along with it too initially was like oh yeah okay sure that's fine but then like you know puts down the voice of reason i think that milt his heart's in the right place he's always wants to give rush that that extra chance because he feels you know although my expertise may be you know a little bit higher than yours you know the city you know right. what works mm -hmm. you've worked with these people and he really clued in on that very quickly that he knew the lawyer that he's worked with this lawyer before he clued in on all the details of the story you know as he was working with him and i think he knew that at the end of the day you know if i choose you to be my partner whether this goes right or wrong i still have to have your back you know yeah. so i'm just gonna be there i'm gonna roll with this and we're gonna see what happens you yeah. could be right yeah and then of course he's not of they get they get busted. Milt, though, ends up, of course, like smoothing it over for him, sweet talking whoever he needs to to get it all figured out just fine. And as they're having that kind of like argument and discussion about that, a car drives, drives by <laughs> and drive shoots by. at him, and Russ gets shot. 
he is going to be okay, we find. But <laughs> Russ gets shot. They have to take the witness to the safe house, all this stuff, which kind of escalates things a bit, obviously. And when Russ is in the hospital, Holly comes to visit him, which, you know, again, we see like how the much norm, she has her googly like eyes. Rush and on him. Yeah, so obvious. So I do wonder if we'll see him reciprocate it at all. Because I don't think we saw that really. No. Right? He didn't no. flirt back at all. I think that if He's we... too focused on himself and versus Mill. Exactly. So I think that with this, the way the series started off with, you know, the, the crime and the dramedy, um, it'll be interesting to see if there's some romance in there. And it has to be there. Like, if, it, if nothing happens, I'm going to be really upset because yeah. <laughs> she's like trying, she's throwing it all in there. And she's, you know, she's his biggest supporter. So I want to see something come of that, a date or something. Yeah. I do love how she really. She's his biggest fan and, yeah. like, you know, thinks he's the best and stands by him, even when everyone else is like, oh, my gosh, Milt is the coolest right. thing. Milt, Milt the boys. Yeah, donuts. the better <laughs> eclairs. She's like, they're the same, you guys. Gosh. Um, but, yeah, I think we'll for sure see something between them. I need to see something. Yeah. Something. And <laughs> something. I don't want to see, that's the thing, I don't want to see the romance with Milt. I want to see the romance with Russ because it's not expected. You right, know? His exactly. His dryness, his crassness is not going to, you know, pay this woman any attention so i need to see something you know yeah exactly i i agree want to see it with russ because <laughs> underdog man right <laughs> um, and then we get to this safe house which is unreal we've got funkhauser outside guarding it and he's like oh wait until you see the inside <laughs> man <laughs> and it's not really even the safe house it's like milt's crash pad and they right. open it up it's like this crazy door opens up and they're in this like underground loft type situation which looks so cool. It's got a TV that's like as bigger High than the wall behind everything. me. You know, <laughs> it's it's nuts. And so they're keeping this kid, Ricky, there, who's the witness. And they tell him, you know, hey, buddy, like we kind of screwed you. Sorry about that. Milt is super positive and hopeful about the situation when Russ is kind of like, <laughs> you know, crimes go unsolved all the time. We mm -hmm. might not figure this out. So I don't know what to tell you, buddy. <laughs> and... So that's so funny. Like every chance they get, they've, you know, Milt's going to be super hopeful and encouraging about things. And then Russ is going to come in with like Debbie Downer perspective on it and kind of like right. more of the voice of reason. So, I mean, between the two, you find like the happy medium for sure. But I think sometimes with that, like in that situation, I think Russ was like a little more accurate, you know, I mean, the cold hard truth. Yes. And yes and no. I feel like, I don't know if I want to call Russ a realist or just, <laughs> he's just trying to find the flaws in Milt so bad that yeah. well, he's just going to say anything and make you them believe anything in order to just discredit Milt. Yeah, like true. It's not about the truth. It's just to discredit Milt. Yeah. Which, backtracking a little bit, when he's in the hospital, I did think that was a little like really sensitive of him to be like, gosh, I don't know why I hate him so much. I don't know why I have to prove myself. I mean... It was like they, I think that was the one time that I kind of got pulled out of the writing a little bit because it seemed kind of too, like, forced from him mm -hmm. a little bit. Like, it was overly sympathetic or overly insightful. I don't know what it was, but that part kind of made me be like, wait, this feels, like, kind of silly it's, of him it saying It seems this. like a different show almost like that. Just that moment's like, what's going on? Yeah, like so it almost it felt like they had to spell out the theme of the show for us. Like, the writers were like, oh, well, let's dumb it down for everybody. Like, this is about him needing to prove himself. And so he had right. to say it out loud for all of us. I don't know It's like it was, almost trying that, to, to force the viewers into being like, sympathizing oh. with them. So, or feeling some form of, I guess, empathy for them instead. And that'd be a better yeah. way. Yeah, like, and I, I think with I was already... I think I was already there. I just felt like that part was a little, a little long, right. a little forced with it. But anyway, when they're at the safe house with the witness, they get a call that a gun has been found. So they rush down, go to find this gun, and they're like, you know, going to fingerprint it. And Milt, of course, is like very dainty with oh, his gloves and stuff. <laughs> and he's like, I think there's some flesh on this gun. And sick, Russ grabs it. He's like, oh, let me see that here. And licks it. Anchovy. So gross. He's like, Listen. that's not flesh, it's anchovy. Which leads them to figuring out who used that gun. That was such an interesting twist right there. Yeah. I, I love that. You know, that was Ricky. Ricky, Ricky was the shooter because he hid the gun in a pizza box <laughs> with anchovies on it. Who, who knew? But yeah, I thought that was a really fun twist, but yes. so disgusting. Do not, come on. The, that gun was in the trash. Yeah, it was in the trash, <laughs> and it was found by a homeless guy. 
And they thought it was flesh on it. You don't lick that. Right. Like, what if it really was flesh? What if it flesh, was like... flesh? <laughs> Homeless man flesh. Ugh. Anyway, so we learned that Ricky was the shooter and he, his sister had overdosed yes. in the past. And so it was a really personal thing. He wanted to kind of avenge his sister's death in a sense. And so he ends up going to Travis, the big, like, big drug dealer guy's house to, you know, and has him at gunpoint there. And then again, we see it back and forth between Milt and Russ kind of playing the like, you know, good cop, bad cop, essentially, but not intentionally doing that. That's just how they are. And, you know, Milt is talking with him and being very compassionate and empathizing with him where Russ, Russ is just like, you don't have to go to jail. You could just die instead, because if you shoot this guy, I'm just going to shoot you back. Right. I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't like the way that scene ended. Yeah, I felt like that scene for one was super long. Yes, we, we definitely We're like, too long. Someone just shoot somebody, do <laughs> something. You know what? And really, that's what I wanted to happen. It's, yeah. it, I I needed some more action. I I, I had enough yeah. milk calming people down right. and and you Coming know coming in and like glamoring them with yes. twinkling his eyes at them. Next time somebody has to shoot somebody, I'm just putting that out there. Somebody has yeah. to die at some point in time. You know. Yeah. Well, maybe not die. They just have to get shot. Well, <laughs> right. I guess I need some crime to really Russ happen. Got shot. Well, but the, I need it wasn't some. That I need to. I need Milt to not win all the time, or yeah. just them to not them together to not win. They right. basically, you know, even though they had the hardships, were on a winning streak the whole episode. I just want to see a little bit more vulnerability. You know, yeah. something to happen where this is real life. This right. is real crime. You know. I think we for sure will. I think the first episode set us up nicely to have both of them have some more vulnerable times throughout the season. Right. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, it ends with Milt talking him down off the ledge. Of course. R- what Ricky gives him, gives him the gun. Everything's fine. They have a big press conference about it. And um, Milt, of course, is up front and center in that press conference. But he does recognize Russ for how right. integral he was for solving the crime, which I thought was really great. I was like, oh, good. It was He's just milk being milk again. <laughs> yeah, but then, of course, in the newspaper, Good Russ style. gets cropped out, <laughs> which is <laughs> wah, wah, saw that coming. Um, but all in, and that's how the episode kind of ends. It ends. felt very quick for an hour show, or I guess, you know, 40 minutes when he cut out commercials, but it felt, it moved quickly for yeah, me, which I, like I guess that. is a good thing. I right? like that because yeah. don't don't drag us along for so no. much. You know, they didn't spend a whole lot of time, you know, just developing characters. And, you know, I like that. You know, you don't, you just kind of dive right into the show. And I think that, you know, with this type of writing style, you know, you're going to get something fresh, something new every week instead of spending so much of the season just developing characters. Right. I like they put little spurts here and there just for you to catch and they really just move through. Yeah. And the thing that I really like about the format of this show, because like we said, it is a little different than the normal cop show that you're used to where every week it's the exact same thing Mm -hmm. the exact same characters they're just solving a different crime which is fun and fun to watch but you don't get that same long kind of relationship with the characters and seeing how the characters grow over time and with this show i think we will still have a different crime every week but because we have these characters starting at such kind of like polar opposites that we'll see a lot of growth each week for them to like come together and become more of a cohesive team. Yeah, I think, and they set us up for a lot of kind of reveals. I think with both of the mm-hmm. characters for why they are the they way they are. are. Yeah. yeah, I think you you hit on those when you said it was it's just relationships. I think it's a very much a relationship oriented show, and yeah, you kind of get the crime, which gives you like the action and gives you you know the intrigue. You know, because I loved how this it turned out to be Ricky. Like that was just too. It just threw me way off. Yeah. Like, even when they say anchovies, I wasn't all the way on there. Maybe I was just I know, lost I was like, anchovies? I was like, wait, what? what? Mean? <laughs> and then they were like, you know, Ricky. So I love them, but I just, I, I like those relationships. You oh, know? yeah. Yeah. So it's good that they can keep us on our toes with the, the crime and the kind of thriller aspects as well. But then having the comedy stuff and the yeah. relationship stuff, that makes it such a stronger show. And I was super pleased by it. I think it'll be great. I so can't what we, wait. Should we should we dive into some predictions Absolutely. for next week? Do we have some prediction <laughs> vibes going and on? And now you're after Buzz Woo. TV predictions. All right. So I don't think that the the like you know coming next week sort of thing gave us a whole lot to run no. with. I think we'll get a new, obviously a new crime is going to happen. But I think 
I'm hoping we get some insight as to why they have the Battle Creek FBI office now. I mean, I don't know that they kind of show their cards on that this early no, into I think the season, that's definitely but gonna happen I want to know on. why. I don't think they're going to give that. I think they're going to keep you, you holding on. For, maybe towards the end of the season, they'll be like, oh, yeah, this is why we're here. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm really trying to see. there's something fishy about that. Yes. I think it's together with something fishy with that and Milt. And I think yeah. both those things oh, need yeah. to be Oh, yeah. He's revealed. too perfect. Yeah. Too good to be true. Yeah. Isn't both those things need to be revealed. <laughs> I want it right away, but of course, yeah, they're I not going to do that to us. going to have to wait a little bit. Yeah, so I think that's going to happen. I mean, I don't think anything's going to happen just yet with um, with Holly and Russ, but maybe, like, you know, maybe he'll flirt back next week. Next, Yeah, I just need a, <laughs> I need a little bit of something. Just If the writers can just give me something to say that there's a possibility, yeah, you know, a that it's going to happen. Yeah, a little a look. Yeah, yeah, Some yeah. Some eye back and forth. Yeah, just like, give me a look. That. Give me a look just to show this something might happen later. Yeah. Do we think that um, they're their kind of informant guy is going to be in it again. What was his name? I don't remember. Uh, Teddy the Teddy Snitch. Teddy the Snitch. Yeah. I think he's going to kind of be a recurring guy. He was <laughs> in it twice, in the beginning of the episode Teddy and the in the end as their snitch. Teddy the Snitch has at least two more episodes on his belt. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Two more bombs so. to drop for us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, is there anything else we missed or anything else we want to go over for episode one? No, but I was glad to see... The character who played Omar, I was glad to see him back on TV. Oh, nice. Yes. He hasn't been around. You, you know, he was. Yeah, I've seen him on a lot of things. Yeah, and he hasn't been around for yeah. a while. I know he took time to focus on his music, but I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's back. He was a really good actor. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, if we're going to shout out the fun people we saw on the show, um, Ariel Vandenberg, who was Milt's like FBI girl yeah. in the beginning, she's a big Viner and comedian, and I love her stuff. So it was super fun to see her on. <laughs> the show i hope we see more of her way to go ariel um yeah so i guess that, that is wraps it. up our first episode of battle creek thanks everybody for tuning in please join us again next week be sure yeah. to subscribe comment on youtube on the videos hit us up on twitter you can find me on twitter at lauren salon that's s-a-l-a-u-n and you can find my friend gary on twitter i am gary thomas yeah Easy. talk talk to us throughout <laughs> the week we want to know what you guys thought of the episodes what you think is going to happen later on let's chat hope you enjoyed the podcast thanks everybody from executive producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil svitek and the entire AfterBuzz tv staff we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz tv network to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of After Buzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of After Buzz TV or its owners or principals.